The Gibbs sampling algorithm, often referred to as the Gibbs sampler, is the most popular MCMC method. The goal of the Gibbs sampler is to draw a sample from a target distribution. Since the Gibbs sampler is an MCMC method, its samples form a Markov chain. In the case of the Gibbs sampler, you iteratively draw samples from the full conditional distributions arising from the target distribution, which we'll look at more closely in the next slide. The full conditional distribution of a random vector is the distribution of that vector conditional on all the other random variables in the relevant joint distribution, which in this case is our target distribution. We're going to discuss the Gibbs sampler in the context of Bayesian statistics. In that case, our target distribution is the posterior distribution, p of theta given y, and our vector of random variables are the parameters of the posterior distribution. We partition the parameter vector into d components. Note that these components can be a single random variable, or a component might be a random vector containing several random variables. Theta minus j denotes the vector containing all components of theta except the jth component. You can specifically see in this vector that we have all d components except the jth one. The full conditional distribution of theta j is the distribution of component j conditional on theta minus j, and since we're in the context of Bayesian analysis, the data as well. Once we've completed drawing samples from the full conditional distribution for each of the d components, we've completed what is known as a cycle. Theta j with superscript t in parentheses will denote the sampled value of theta j in cycle t. Theta t, superscript t in parentheses, will denote the value of all values sampled in cycle t. Theta minus j with superscript t minus 1 in parentheses denotes the most current value of all d components excluding theta j. This would mean that the first j minus 1 components have already been updated in the cycle but the remaining components after theta j still need to be updated. P of theta j given theta minus j script t minus 1 and the data will denote the full conditional distribution of theta j conditional on theta minus j being fixed at theta j superscript t minus 1 and the data being fixed at y. Let's look at the basic algorithm for the Gibbs sampler. First, choose a vector of starting values for theta. These need to be in the support of the parameters. Next, set the time step t to equal 1. Next, for each component j from 1 to d, draw from each full conditional distribution. Once you've completed a cycle, increment t. Then, keep repeating the third and fourth steps until the Markov chain converges to its stationary distribution. We won't discuss how to formally assess convergence in this video. Let's consider an example about how to implement a Gibbs sampler. This is an unrealistic but helpful example provided by Gilman et al. in the third edition of their excellent book, Bayesian Data Analysis. Assume the data distribution is bivariate normal with unknown mean theta and known covariance matrix sigma. The covariance matrix has ones along the diagonal and known correlation rho in the off diagonal. Assume the prior distribution is improper. Specifically, the density is proportional to the uniform density over the real line. I don't recommend improper priors in general, but this one will result in a valid posterior distribution. Specifically, the posterior distribution for theta will be bivariate normal with a mean of y, the observed data, and the original covariance matrix of the data distribution. In this case, we know the posterior distribution in closed form. However, we will implement the Gibbs sampler because it's pretty straightforward. You have to know something about the conditional distribution of a multivariate normal to derive the full conditionals. One place you can find this information is on Wikipedia. Once you have the formula defining the conditional distribution of a multivariate normal, you can show that the full conditional distribution of theta1, i.e. theta1 conditional on theta2 and the observed data y, is normal with a mean of y1 plus rho times theta2 minus y2, and a variance of 1 minus rho squared. The full conditional distribution of theta2 is very similar with the relevant aspects changed. We will implement a Gibbs sampler assuming the observed data y is equal to 0, 0 and rho is equal to 0 0.8. Let's look at the code we would use to do this in R. First, we set the relevant parameters. B is the number of cycles, which I set to be equal to 1000. Rho is the correlation between y1 and y2. 
and sigma is the standard deviation of each of the full conditional distributions. Then we set the values of the observed data, y1 and y2, equal to zero. Next, I'm going to create a function to do the Gibbs sampling. You don't have to do this, but it makes it easier to run multiple chains with different starting values, which is something you will want to do in general to check convergence. The only argument of this function is theta. This is actually bad programming practice because there are many other variables the function depends on, such as b, the data, and the standard deviation of the full conditionals. However, the function will be able to see those values as long as we specify them ahead of time. So to make this example simpler, I have left them out of the function. However, I want to emphasize that this is poor coding practice, and you should really avoid this. It's an abuse of global variables and can cause you headaches if you aren't careful. So my Gibbs sampler function, which I've called Gibbs, takes the starting vector theta. Within the function, I first create a matrix theta sims to store the output of the chain. The number of rows matches B, and there are two columns since we have two values in theta. I then create a loop running from one to B to repeat B cycles of my Gibbs sampler. For each iteration of the loop, I then do a number of things. First, I compute the mean of the full conditional distribution for theta one. Note that it depends on the current value of theta two. I then draw from the full conditional of theta one and update the value of theta one. I then take the most current value of theta one, which is the value I just drew, and use that to update the mean of the full conditional distribution for theta two. I then draw from the full conditional distribution of theta two and update the value of theta two. Now that I've completed a cycle, I store the new values of theta in my storage matrix. After I do this b times, I then return the values of my chain. In the next set of code, I run the chain 1000 times using negative 2.5, 2.5 as a starting position. I then plot the results. I specify pch equal to the period to make small dots. I call the result a sand plot because it reminds me of sand. Unsurprisingly, the samples look a lot like what you would expect from a multivariate normal distribution. I now run three more chains with three different starting values. I then use the following commands to combine the results into one plot using color to distinguish the results of the different chains. The plot looks similar to before, but with more data since we've combined all of the chains. Notice that all of the chains are producing samples in roughly the same part of the plot, which is an indication that the chains have converged. This is not how you would normally assess convergence of your MCMC -MC chains, but it's better than nothing. In this last slide, I've plotted the first 10 cycles of the four Markov chains, distinguishing each chain by a different color. Note that because theta1 and theta2 are drawn in separate steps, the chains only move horizontally or vertically at each step depending on which parameter is being sampled. One thing you can notice from this plot is that even though the four chains started at four different positions, they pretty quickly started moving toward the more likely part of the posterior, which is additional evidence that the chains are converging rather quickly to the target distribution. To see the code used for this analysis, please click the link to my GitHub page found in the video description.